The game of football is simple. If you have got the ball, keep it within your team. If you are near the ball, but one of your teammates has it, then support that player and make yourself available to receive it. If you are further away from the ball, think about your team's shape and your position in the team's formation. In seeing football this way, moving progressively away from the player with the ball itself, zone 0, seirul.low defines two zones. One is the mutual support zone or help space, two is the cooperation zone. Let's look at these three zones in a recent match. In the picture below, Adama Tra has waited three seconds with the ball on the edge of the box, during which time the Atletico Madrid defense have moved toward him. Tra is the player in zone 0. The key zone 1 player, mutual support. Player here is Pedri, who is positioned to receive a pass. Dani Alves is also jogging up to potentially take a role behind Trier on the right wing, also in zone 1. Currently, the Atletico Madrid defense are not well organized in zone 1, with too many players concentrated on Trier, and not thinking about what might happen next. Barcelona's most important zone 2 players in this case are the three players, Ferran Torres, Gavi and De Jong, in the box. They aren't directly supporting Trier, but by occupying the central area and outnumbering the defenders, they are ensuring that they are in good positions, if Trau does get the ball into the box. Before we see what happens next, if you don't already know, let's summarize. Zone 0 is about individual skills. This is all about what Trau does with the ball. Zone 1 is about movement. In this case, Pedri has a direct supporting role centrally, and Dani Alves is coming up to help out. Zone 2 is tactical. The question here is how many players Barcelona wants to have in the box, and which spaces they should occupy. This is relevant to all players and is based on the coach's instructions. Different players have different roles and different skills in different zones. In this example, the focus is on Traer, who is very much a Zone 0 player. He likes to have the ball and does exciting things when he has it, with dribbling and beating players as his key skills. The question for football analytics is how we turn our understanding of what he does into numbers. Simply counting the number of dribbles he makes does not tell us the whole story. What makes good dribbling? To get more context, we use a statistical model to measure what makes a good dribble, based on a combination of event data which tells us what the player with the ball did, and tracking data which gives the positions and velocities of all the players on the pitch, we found that there are three major components to a good dribble. Where the dribble happens on the pitch, how far it progresses the ball and how fast the player runs when carrying it out. This allows us to create a metric a KPI for dribbling, and here we find why Trauer excels. The table below gives league rankings for the Premier League this season, where 100 is best in league per 90 minutes played, and 0 is worst, for high-speed dribbles, failed dribbles and cutbacks. So, when Tram made his move against Atletico, suddenly accelerating down the edge of the box and placing a cross into the middle for Gavi to head in, he was doing precisely what that statistics said that he was good at. SEIRUL.LO's 3-zone system is essential for analyzing both tactics and individual players. In the example here, we have used statistics to analyze the zone 0 ball skills of Adama Trau. In my previous article, I showed a way in which the concept of pitch control can be useful in organizing tactically in Zone 2. In the next article, we will look at how to scout player movement in Zone 1. In the meantime, I can't help noting that there is one particular player in the Premier League that shares some of Tra's statistical style. Aston Villa's Emiliano Buendia is the most similar player in terms of going past the opposition and then creating opportunities for teammates through cutbacks. Like Tra before him, Buendia has come in for some criticism for his lack of goals. But Buendia's underlying stats show that there is more to the game than scoring. Aston Villa should keep faith in last season's signing. We need to use the right numbers when assessing individual skills. 